Hello and welcome back to another ex episode of XCOM 2 War of the Chosen. My name is Saiken. Today we're returning to the disaster campaign Advent Lockdown. It's an utmost pleasure to do the first uh, actual mission to kind of get back into the game. So far we were on our back heels and uh, now we're turning it around, bringing the fight to Advent. We're starting with uh, taking an Advent facility. Operation Storm Hand here is uh, fighting against 11 enemies. I initially uh, took the decision to maybe solo mode uh, the entire um, facility. But upon further inspection, I think this is a great option to uh, gain some experience under our belts and uh, just level most of the Grenadiers, really. So instead of single running, uh, single man running it, uh, we are going in and are doing it the good old way. Shooting everything and basically extracting. All right, and we landed. So as always, it's a non-timed mission. We have all of the time in the world. Um, and we should play it safe. I am trying to kind of flawless this one here. So let's use our um, Reaper in order to take a good look. What we're dealing with, this is a perfect position for a sniper as well. Got some high ground there. A super heavy tower is the first objective. Might as well. Move into full cover and some full cover, some full cover, some full cover over here. Good. We'll eventually get down, uh, get the super heavy tower down. So far, I wouldn't even. Um, break our concealment let's see where the remaining enemies are that's a specter and it looked like an um, shield bearer this over here is a building there is often an explosive um, device or remote startable device right next to a building another pack of two See, there it is. We could remote start it. Just need someone to effectively walk by. Got it. Moving up. So far, nothing of this here should be problematic. Got it. Move it. So moving up, moving up, moving up. Good. We're moving slowly but surely to that high ground. That's an elite priest and a purifier. Again, shouldn't be a problem for us. There is yet another patrol. That's the remote start I was looking for. Let us hope they're just going to get a tiny bit closer. And I can remote start it from up here. Hmm, okay. So let's move up. We're taking half cover if needed. Orders confirmed. Moving out. Rolling out. And high ground for our sniper. Good. I hope someone is walking a bit closer to the actual building. This group here seems to be ignoring it for now. I 
That's a good start, but I think it is not yet close enough. No, not close enough. Standing up there. Just to get a better line of sight. Pretty sure this one here would uh, be spotted out. Yeah, see, now it shows that it is spotted out. It showed the last round that it has uh, that this one here would reveal, but um, it, maybe I I missed it. The first time that I mouse over it, it did not show um, that it would reveal us. Very strange. Okay, we're not going anywhere close to that building. Because naturally we don't want to blow ourselves up. Instead, let's put everyone on overwatch for now. And hope that this uh, pair of advents will come a bit closer. Wonderful. That is pretty much exactly what I was looking for. I would say that leveled the playing field. Don't want to trigger the next pack over there. So instead we're going to go back to here. We're still in full cover, uh, concealment rather. So we should be fine. And let's overwatch for now. Just want to make sure that those two are kind of moving over here so that we could help, um, get them without needing to shoot into cover. There's another remote start. I'm on move. There you go. Moving up. And that's a solid kill. Good. Not very surprising. We're just being spotted out. I think we have a pretty decent position here. Don't want to take any chances, so what we're going to do is we're shredding. Perfect. Ah, not as good as I thought we would um, we would be. Yeah, before we're going over, let's On my way. first make sure that we're dealing with the remaining officer. Because believe it or not, he is actually a bit more dangerous than 
and then the tower. Good, there we go. That solves this problem. Let's see, can we? No, we cannot. Well, that is unfortunate. We're barely out of range. My bad, should have planned that a bit more accurately. Also cannot walk up here, which definitely would be an interesting option. Yeah, unfortunately, unfortunately we can't, just can't reach the tower, the super heavy tower. We also don't want to be spotted out. I would like to remote start this over here. Moving over just in case so that we can make sure we're in range. Don't want to trigger the next pack, so we're just going to reload and we're probably going to take a shot on our sniper. The Warlock, that is five additional ability points or 10 even. Let's see what uh, he has missed. Uh, shots will generate additional shielding. Okay, he's adversary against the Templars, which we don't have. Takes increased damage from explosions. Would teleport after every shot. That stinks. Reveals concealed units. That stinks a lot uh, because uh, that here means our um, our Reaper has an actual problem and regeneration. Well, that's pretty bad as well. That is one strong warlock. It's one of the chosen. This mission just got a little more dangerous. Stay on top of its position. It explains why the mission was ranked very difficult. Taking fire over here. I cannot hide for long. My power precedes me wherever I go. Moving up, that should not reveal us. This here is probably the best uh, place to start. Number one, because it opens up the playing field quite a bit. Number two, because it drops that fool. Massive amount of damage. Let's get down the turret. Unfortunately, that did not work out. Instead, we make sure that the turret dies. We know there is yet another pack over here. So gotta be careful. Next round, zombies will approach us. Warlock will summon some of them. Taking a tight formation. Moving on target location. Moving to Overwatch. Moving to Overwatch. Moving to Overwatch. Good, we got two down here on the right hand side. Uh, the turret is number three. Those uh, two would be four and five.
And since we have, I think, 13 enemies, we are almost halfway through. Zombies nowadays have 10 hit points, since they are, quote unquote, already the end game zombies. Nice little execution there, by the way. Totally love it. Yeah, fully upgraded zombies, nasty, nasty enemies. Specifically with the spectral rupture. You really don't want to kill them, but at the same time you can't let them live. Being forced to go back. Good, we're all moving just a tiny bit further away from that zombie. Alright, that's one down. There you go. We're not targeting any of those. Let's hit the purifier and we maybe be able to just explode him. That worked out very well. Unfortunately, the priest over here started to receive some undying loyalty. Yeah, we don't want to mess around with him. Instead, let's go back just a tiny bit and we're reloading. Three more rounds until the Warlock is going to put in um, his zombies once again. So far, so good. Moving over. Still got both of them in a really nice spot. Might as well start with the Spectre. Very nice critical hit. Oh, wow. Could the Spectre just put himself any worse than that? Let's sting him. Wasn't sure if we would kept our concealment normally we would due to uh, thanks um, thanks to silent killer but we were unfortunately also pretty much right next to him so I rather wanted to be safe than sorry Moving into full cover. Target, 
Yeah, moving over one action so that we could actually finish this guy. Of course, worst potential outcome. Good old undying loyalty never stops to disappoint. It's by, f by far one of the worst events. It does look so harmless on paper because, yeah, there's a small chance that uh, mm, that enemies will start to become zombies. So what's so bad about it? But if you really think about it, it's, it's actually quite bad. You cannot fully calculate uh, mm, um, or ensure that someone would definitely kill an enemy because there's always that little chance that they just come back. Secondly, it even makes Advent more uh, stronger than it than they have before because the zombies can deal quite a bit of damage. In the beginning, they're like what six to seven points of damage in the end game they can easily uh, hit for 10 so they are no joke and it invalidates certain classes like if you uh, if you take a ranger without serial for instance um, or without untouchable it might as well uh, be that you find yourself in a situation where you go in uh, with a melee strike and shortly afterwards you realize, okay, although you killed it, uh, you get a retaliation from the zombie back. Very nasty event. And to add um, insult to injury, we're going to get some more zombies. Spectral ones, but nonetheless, they suck as well. Unfortunately, we still have uh, haven't upgraded the snipers, which means these guys here will not be a one shot. At least they are nicely, nicely clustering up. All right, moving over. And since I don't think that we will have a really good use of the plasma grenade on a specialist anytime soon, might as well use it here. It's 15 points of damage or 12 nonetheless still still worthwhile I would argue that's one down that's two down Gosh, we're having even problems getting all of them down. Ready to go. All right, we're reloading to be action efficient. Yeah, well. I got what I needed. That was not fun at all. Moving out. I want to be spotted out by the warlock, so I am taking precaution here. There's another super heavy tower on top and I think in the mission briefing we noticed that there originally had been 
if I'm not completely mistaken, there originally had been a gatekeeper. Not sure, but I th I'm pretty. I'm like eighty percent sure. I mean, yeah, we could kill the tower up here. I suppose not the worst idea ever. It's a simple trade. One claymore for a tower. So we got three P uh, packs of two now uh, down that's six two towers that's eight I think that's pretty much it Well, not quite there yet. I'm all over it. I would like to be very careful not to be spotted out. For sure the chosen is right here. Good, we're moving up as far as we can. Moving. Everyone goes on overwatch. One more turn until the next wave of zombies crashes in. This guy here is just, I suppose, protecting the, uh, the target. He seems to have a reduced cooldown as well. I was under the impression it is one longer than what we've seen. That's disturbing to say the least. Well, that is going to hurt. Interestingly enough, the guy with Spectral Rupture now decides to simply stay away from the others. Normally they don't do that. So we're trying to move up as well as we can. And by thinking about it, maybe we don't need to kill the warlock. Maybe we're just going to secure this area, plant and get away. That's not the worst idea either. Let's start taking these guys out. Gosh, are we missing damage again? Almost seems like that. The 
reason why I was hitting both is I wanted to make sure that we do have theoretically a grenade to just finish them. This could be an execution. Unfortunately, it's not. Gotta use grenades just to get rid of the zombies, so... Yeah, the longer I think about it, the better the idea uh, looks to essentially just leave this area. Alright, at least the zombie decides to attack now. Next turn we're going to see the Chosen again. For now, let's just get rid of the zombie. There we go. Good. Idea. The idea would be let's sprint and get every, uh, everyone really close to the evac zone. Put the evac zone up here. Move in, plant, move out. Done. Good, everyone reloads and we're just taking a couple of overwatches. Is it time for zombies again? I think we have one more turn. Yep, we do. I was wrong with the initial impression that the timer was shorter. It is exactly his normal timer. Moving up, we're overwatching, reload overwatch, overwatch, overwatch and overwatch. That's the last wave of spectral zombies and although I do understand that it is less sexy to let the warlock live. I think there is actually a, be a benefit of making sure that we're going to have a flawless mission as opposed to risking to take damage and maybe getting some more ability points. Don't get me wrong, the ability points are important, but it's not the end of the world to not have them. There's the spectral rupture. Okay, fair enough. Good. Evex zone. You will make a fitting sacrifice for the elders. I go where you Hunt goes in. Plants the C4. Reveals himself and takes an exit. There we go. Going into position. Oh, let's kill this guy here. Maybe we get uh, even getting a promotion. No, nope, of course not.
Good, there we go. One down. That's a 100% kill. And that is another kill. Good. We dealt with the zombies, that's good. Not sure, I think we got two promotions out of it and successfully done uh, the mission, so it's pretty damn good. Here's the post mission screen before I forget it, uh, 26 killed. So there was another pack, I think it was uh, the gatekeeper pack plus the chosen, which we haven't killed, but it's fine. We got XP out of it and that's what counts. And we're back in the game, just landed, let's take a quick look. See, we got even four promotions, so it was definitely worth it. Got a lot of shredder options out of here. And revival protocol. Plus our sniper got a promotion. Gonna get that good old long watch. Your troops performed admirably, Commander. On top of it, we delayed the avatar project by two we're going to get another delay very soon don't want to reduce the contact costs now i think we're fine might as well want to do contact uh, soon ish let's continue getting intel that's really what we need not the reduction of contact costs And there we go, we got our Templar. Good, let's take a look here. We could reduce the Avatar progress, not necessarily needed. What else? We wanted to hunt the Chosen, so I think that's essentially what we're going to do. Putting Hayward in here. Negate soldier wounded, well that's fine. Doesn't matter and whom of the soldiers needs plus one health. I think uh, it would have been great to have uh, um, the Psy operative doing it, but essentially his training is more important at the moment. Let's just use one of our low, uh, low ranking uh, grenadiers. They can always use an additional health. So this year in 16 days would give us access to his stronghold, which is what I want to do next. And at the same time, we got ourselves finally yet another colonel. Look at that. Uh, stacking up the ranks, got a fourth colonel. Let's take a look what we got. No blade storm. I'm sorry, mate. I tried my best, but no blade storm here however fortress is excellent the second best ability for him we're going to go for parry we're going to go for deflect and we're going to go for reflect simply because uh, these are absolutely fantastic skills i like ghost but it costs 25 points let's see what else we need uh, next generating more focus very important deep focus very important that way you have additional focus on the character uh, arc wave not bad i like it um, but ghost is great as well void conduit is not bad either matter of fact all of them are decent i think ghost uh, when we're going to fight a lot of the um, chosens will absolutely be fantastic amplify is great and arc wave is great as well I like the channel ability just to get more more focus. I like sustain. That's not bad either. And the type of campaign that I've seen where uh, he continues to unfortunately lose soldiers, maybe I should actually give him sustain. It is a good ability. Just kind of at least gives you that that one out amplify and arc wave would be how I would be skilling it normally let's go with that 
you can always do sustain later like i said it's a great ability so this here is aoe damage a lot of um, blocking and essentially gathering of focus as soon as possible i would go as far as to go for a channel as well because uh, the templar really needs a lot of focus and that's pretty much um, what we will need on this character Together with a mind shield, uh, that is a one-man army. And you can deal a lot of damage with him. Got an urgent communication coming in for you now. Good. Got a really nice month. 383. Um, avatar sabotage, not uh, very good. Additional dark event, also not necessary. That one here is a bit more of a problem. We might want to launch our attack... Uh, for him as soon as possible three more weeks until yet another alien facility is going to happen and in one week we're going to see the next retaliation strike on top of it major breakthrough is always a really bad project gotta deal with that sooner than later still like the xp still like the ability points this one here is great Double the ability points gained in combat isn't bad either. It's pretty greedy setup. I think we can deal with it. At the moment, it is really a setup that requires a lot of, or that uh, that is pretty greedy. The 15% additional research speed might not be bad for the current situation, or he has a lot of weapon research left over. Might as well take it for one month. Good, we gotta get some of these supplies. And yeah, now we gotta cross our fingers because we're being hunted once again. Don't want to be shut down yet again. Good, we got 400 supplies. Let's see what we can do. In terms of permanent uh, upgrades, there are quite a few that would make sense. I like that one. I like that one. But those are probably a bit too pricey for now. I almost am inclined to wait because we're having our armor upgrade soon. And that will cost a lot of money. So... This one here would be the uh, the uh, plasma weapon. That's not a bad upgrade. All three of those are not bad upgrades, but I think we're going to save and wait until five more days until we get the powered armor. You know what? Let's get the reduced contact cost. We do have one um, uh, contact in North America over here. Right here, which costs 160. So essentially reduced contact costs for it would be worth 80 intel. And 80 intel in, 60 day, in six days is better than what you would normally get. Yeah. I was hoping to invade his stronghold before that would happen. Of course, it doesn't. Uh, that is bad luck. We gotta defend our Avenger once again. Boy, oh boy, this campaign uh, is definitely, definitely a bummer. Uh, so yet another Avenger assault. Let me, uh, let me kick this guy's ass. And once we're done with that we are going to focus on infiltrating him. So next mission is yet another defense. <laughs> Hope you're going to enjoy this, guys. If you like uh, the run and if you like the Saving Your Disaster campaigns, feel free to leave a comment down below. And don't forget to subscribe. Thank you and have a great day. Bye-bye.